Chris again. Uh, I'm excited about this next coding exercise. I've got my friends Josh and Aaron here from the University of Mount Union uh, visiting us to, to do it uh, at Ohio State. And I'm excited about it because this coding exercise is based on one of the best internet games ever. Aaron, tell them all about it. It is called Agario, and what you get to do is you're a little blob eating food, trying to get bigger so you can eat other blobs, and avoiding other blobs bigger than you so that you don't get eaten. Right, so the idea of this game is that you move around at basically a constant speed, uh, and just and you're controlling it and moving it around, things like that, so it's pretty simple. And so I thought, what a great idea for uh, just the first exercise in the STEM coding project. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Josh, and they're going to take it take it from here. So, so from here, Aaron's going to explain what you're going to do on this page. All right. So very first thing, you're going to want to sign up or log in. This way, you can save your work, and you don't have to worry about losing work if you work for an hour and have to go do something else. If, mm -hmm. From when we get to more extensive codes and stuff too. <laughs> Message, Message from, from future Aaron, Aaron and Josh. We just want to let you know that sign up is optional. You do not have to do it. It's just there to help you save your work. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're sharing a computer with your partner, just take some turns. I'll do a couple edits. Then I'll do a couple edits. That way you're still both learning everything you need to know. Hey. All right. I think that's it. Back to past Aaron and Josh. Hey. Next thing, just so we can see all the code more clearly, let's hit this drop down area, arrow right over here. That way we can see as much as possible. Now we already have a code written here. Let's see if it does anything. So I'm going to hit this play button up at the top here. Nice and big. And now we've got this code over here. And I'll go ahead and change this so it's right in the middle there. I'm going to click on this screen first. If you can read, you can tell that. Mm -hmm. And now let's see what happens if I try the arrow keys. So here's right arrow. Nice velocity vector going to the right. Mm -hmm. But now if I hit the up, down, or left, it's not really working. Mm -hmm. So how would we fix that? All right. So to fix that, we're going to go into the code. So Aaron's going to bring up the code. So, first thing we see is the position is being given by 0, 0, so it's going to start in the middle. Next, we have the velocity in the x and y direction are 0 and 0, so it's not going to be moving at the beginning. Then you'll see this weird dt thing, which starts at 0, which is just indicating a change in time for the computer. And it's going to be a point 0.1, that way mm -hmm. over time it is going to change. Yeah, it'll change very slowly and smoothly. Okay, so this update location right here is going to be x plus equals the vx times the delta t. So it's going to change the velocity and the change the x's position depending on whatever velocity we give it. And we'll go ahead and explain that more a little bit later, but mm -hmm. now let's go ahead and look. We have this vx equals zero. So that means if I'm not pressing any keys, mm -hmm. our circle, our little blob, he's just gonna stay put, which is good. We don't want him doing anything unless we tell him to. Yeah. Alright, so now we see if key is down, do nothing. Well, that doesn't really help us, does yeah, it? Yeah, why would we want that? All right, so we have for key right that it's going to be vx equals 10. So why don't we just go ahead and put that in. We got vx equals 10. Don't forget that semicolon at the end mm -hmm. there. And now I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see that picture. We hit this play button to update the code. Click on the screen. Go to the right. Looks yep. good. Go to the left. It's still oh. going to the right. All right, so I guess now is the time to mention we got this little axis over here, and that's showing what direction we want to go in. So f this way is the plus x, up is plus y, and mm -hmm. as you might imagine, if we want to go the other way, that's the negative direction. So we're going to have to make mm -hmm. this left a negative 10. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and update this again, take a look at our blob here, move him in the middle, right and left, now he's going the right way. All right, so that works out pretty well, but I still can't do anything if I use my up or down arrows. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and zoom into our code a little bit here and just take a quick little look. So we want to change this do nothing. Pretty sure we all know uh, we're going to make it a VY. Pretty yeah. self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Up, we're trying to go positive. Down, we're trying to go negative. Exactly. So we're going to make that one a negative 10. Mm -hmm. All right, so we updated all that. See if we can get it to move. All right, so I'm hitting the play button, update the code, hit the screen, so now we can use it. Right, left, but up and down is still not oh. working. It's just showing me a vector. So what do we think the reason for that is? Well, we can find that reason actually up because we never made the y change. As you can see, we only have an x here. And the same thing here, we don't want our blob to just go flying off into the distance, so we need to set it when it's not moving equal to zero as well. So 
Aaron's going to write out, we want it to change in the vy direction, not the vx, and we want this vx is zero, we want the vy to be zeros also. So Aaron's going to run the program and we're going to see what happens when she runs it with these new modifications. Right, and this way now our y direction is updating too instead of just the x direction updating. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I updated the code, right, left, looks good, uh, up and down we're moving too. And as you can see we can move di diagonal now too. Look at these arrows though, if I move to the left over here, that way it's not in your way, that's the one size arrow. Up arrows, go one size arrow. Mm -hmm. But if I go diagonal, I mean, call me crazy, but that looks like a bigger arrow right there. Yeah. So one of the reasons for that is this velocity vector addition. So that's what you're seeing when you see this blob move in a certain way. That one moves that way. Then when Aaron moves it up, it moves that way. When you add them two together, it becomes greater than the two were apart. All right. And you can figure that out using Pythagorean theorem, too, if you want mm -hmm. to do that. Before we look at some display features that we can use with our code, let's further explain updating location. We have math world and computer world. In math world, final position is given by x sub f equals x sub i plus v sub x times delta t. But in computer world, instead of delta t, we use dt. So now we have our new x equal to our old x plus vx times dt. Since we are just adding to our old x, we're just updating location and we can use x plus equals vx times dt. All right. So next, we're going to add a code because we want to see what the path of the blob looks like. All right, and these are, there's some pretty cool things that you can do, but this is all in the display. So we're going to go down here in the bottom, towards the bottom of the code, and we're going to go after the display. So you see this comment here, mm -hmm. where we can add more graphics. So we're going to add more graphics, and we're going to just go ahead and copy over some code that we have. All right, so we copied that over, and Josh mm -hmm. is going to explain it as we get it all nice and I'll update it, show you what it does. All right, so we have right here this 4i equals 0. So this for loop is counting for us, basically. And as we look at this, you can see it, it's only going to move with this x history dot length. So that's going to tell us, basically, we don't want it to be too long. The i plus equals 1 means we're going to add i's each time. So it's counting itself, like I said earlier. Now it's going to draw points with this x and y history, so we get multiple points all at the same time. All right, and now I'll update that. Click on there, and you can already see the little dot in the center of the circle, so it's just sitting there, so we just keep drawing that little dot right there. So a plus one is adding the dot every single time, for every second. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got a nice little rectangle there. Yeah. And if I go diagonal, look at that there. We still have some pretty uh, sharp corners, though. Mm. That doesn't seem too realistic. Nah, I don't know. I, don't I mean, if we're like stopping, that. maybe. So let's go ahead and add in some more code here. We're going to copy it over once again. That way you don't have to hmm. just keep watching me type. We're going to add in these graphing codes. So I'm going to just take this from over here, come back in here. Again, we're changing the display, so we're going to just add it in there. And I'm going to tab this over so it's nice and aligned here. And we have this add point for vx. So we're just looking at the velocity and time, velocity for the x direction only. Just keep it a little bit simple there. All right, so now if I update this, we now have a velocity versus time graph. So let's see what our velocity is doing as we move. So move up and down, nothing's going because that's not x or y direction. Mm -hmm. But I'm going right, got a pretty sharp line. Left, really sharp line. It's graphing it in the middle there now because I'm not moving, so it's zero. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch Ooh. of sharp lines. What's that Ooh, telling nice. us? Wow, well, the velocity is just changing instantaneously. There's no smoothness. It's just this abrupt, sharp, you know, change in something. So how would that happen, Aaron? Uh, we can't do that. Uh, my basketball coach likes to have us run sprints. Let me just tell you, as much as she would like it, you cannot instantaneously change direction. You're going to break an ankle or something if you try and do that. Yeah. So we have to take some time to accelerate. We have to slow down to change direction mm -hmm. or in some way change what we're doing. We are not, at least I don't think I'm a cyborg, mm -hmm. so we can't yeah. just change instantaneously. All right, but so maybe next time when we talk about acceleration, we'll be able to get a, a little more realistic than this is. But mm -hmm. for a start, this isn't too shabby. Yep. All right, thanks for your time. Hope this helped. Yep. Bye. Bye.